All right, in this video, I am going to show you how to use Mathagon to do um, to represent multiplying fractions in a really visual way that's going to help students totally understand, um, first off, from a conceptual point of view, wh why does multiplying fractions work the way it does? And then it's going to guide students towards a deeper understanding of the actual algorithm, the official algorithm itself. So let's get started. Now, the first thing is I'm in Mathagon, and here's our problem. Let's take a look at 1 and 1 fourth times 1 and 4 fifths. All right, now, what we're going to do is we're going to remember back in the day in third grade when students were beginning to learn multiplication and that one of the ways to think of multiplication was the area model. For example, 3 times 8 would, represent, would be represented by a rectangle, 3 units tall, eight units wide and what would the students do to get the answer well they would count um, they would count all the squares and find that there were 24 squares now sometimes they would they would do shortcuts and they would say well i know a three by five that's 15 and then a three by three is nine so 15 plus nine is 24 and they would kind of find these partial products on their way to getting the answer of 24 and we're going to do the exact same thing with fractions so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my little grid to make everything kind of snap in, in place. Now that one and one fourth times one and four fifths means our rectangle needs to be one and one fourth units tall and it's going to be one and four fifths units wide. All right. So there is our one and four fifths units wide. Good. Move it over here a little bit. All right. Now, you'll notice I kind of did it cockeyed down here, and that's on purpose because this is not part of the rectangle. This is just telling us that we want it to be one and one fourth units tall and one and four fifths units wide. Really, what we're going to be doing is we want to find the area of this big blue rectangle right there. Kind of like what were we, what were we doing over here? We were trying to find the area. We were counting all the squares of that three by eight rectangle. Well, we're gonna do the same thing here. But right now we don't see any squares. So let's kind of insert our squares. All right, so now uh, the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna think of I know it's right now, it's one, um, one and one fourth units tall, okay? And, but we can see, hey, wait a second, right here, right here, one by one is one whole. One wide, one tall, one times one is one. So lurking right here <laughs> is a one unit square. So let's just be deliberate and let's cut it and show it. Oopsies. So let's cut it right there and oops and right there. And so that piece right there and I'll make it, oh, let's make it mustard. That piece right there represents one whole square. And so we know our answer has to be greater than one because this mustard is one. And so what is this whole thing? Well, it's gotta be greater than one. So we we're already starting to get towards an estimation. But now we need to figure out exactly how much more than one is our answer. And so we need to kind of further cut this hole into its fractional parts. And what, what does that mean? Well, uh, how tall is this? Well, it's one, but we can also think of that it as four fourths. So that square is four fourths tall and how wide is it well it's one unit wide but we can also think of it as five fifths units wide so now we can cut this hole into its fractional parts so let's do that
So now we can see that one whole has been cut into 20 fractional pieces. So it takes 20 fractional pieces to make one whole. So now our job is to just figure out how many more fractional pieces do we have left over? Basically, how many twentieths do we have left over? Because each of these, if it takes 20 to make one whole, then each of these fractional pieces is a twentieth. So now we're going to cut the rest of this figure into those twentieths to figure out how many twentieths we have left over. Now that we've cut it into those fractional pieces, really all we have to do is count and figure out how many twentieths we have left over. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So these 20 pieces right here is another hole. So we have one hole right here in mustard. We have another hole here in kind of a limey green. <laughs> so we have two holes and we have one, two, three, four, five. So five fractional pieces left over. So what is, it, what is our answer? Well, our answer, and I'll do it in black. Our answer is we have two holes and we have five fractional pieces left over. And those fractional pieces were called twentieths. So our answer is two and five twentieths. How do we connect this to the algorithm? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make a copy of it. And there we go. There's our one and four fifth, I mean one and one fourth times one and four fifths, all right? So now, how does this connect to that standard algorithm? Well, how tall was our rectangle altogether? Well, originally we called it one and one fourth, but eventually it was nine, uh, five fourths units tall, because we can see it right here, five fourths units tall. Now, how wide was our rectangle? Well, originally it was one and four fifths, but eventually we discovered that it was actually nine fifths units wide. All right, there we go. Now, how many units does it take to make one whole? Well, it took 20 units to make one whole. How did we discover that? Well, we did four times five. Where do we see that? Oh, we see that right here. Four times five gives us 20. So our fractional, I mean, the number of fractional pieces necessary to make one whole is 20 because we did four times five and that gives us one whole. How many pieces does it take to make one whole? And it makes, it takes 20, four times five. Now, how many pieces did we have all together? Well, our rectangle was five units tall and nine units wide. So five times nine gives us 45. So we know all together in this entire rectangle here, we know we have 20, uh, 45 pieces total. It takes 20 of them to make a whole. So I can see I have another 20 right here. So I have two holes and five pieces left over. So our answer is two and five twentieths. And yes, that can be simplified, but right now we're just gonna leave it at two and five twentieths. So there is how to use Mathagon to represent the area model of multiplying fractions and connecting that area model to the standard algorithm and why that standard algorithm actually makes sense.